Well, it seems as if the FTC woke up and chose violence this week when it comes to them going after the titans of the gaming industry. This week's story focuses on how you could be entitled to refunds from Epic Games on Fortnite. Find out why, up next. <laughs> What up guys, this is Kalo, and I'm here to give you the lowdown on all things gaming. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to this channel for weekly video game news content and drop a like on the video. Also too, we are nearing 100 subscribers. Hopefully by the time this video goes up, we hit it. But if you subscribe to this channel, thank you. I really do appreciate it. And I'm glad you guys are digging the content. So recently, the United States Federal Trade Commission reached an agreement with Epic Games to garner a combined $520 million settlement for various violations in their ever so popular game, Fortnite. The split goes $275 million towards a penalty for violating children's privacy laws and $245 million in refunds for tricking users into making unwanted charges. Now, this settlement alone broke records. Yay? Now what for? It is the biggest amount secured by the FTC in gaming and the biggest amount the FTC ever got through rule violations ever. Now that $245 million is stemming from concerns over the designs for the Fortnite item shop and refund system in Fortnite. More specifically, an admitted cool term that I learned is dark patterns, which basically means the user interface on the item shop tricks players of any and all ages into making unintended purchases. Some players even went as far to claim that they were unknowingly charged for things when they tried to wake up the game from sleep mode or even while the game was loading which pretty much resulted in a lot of parents being charged without any sort of clue. Now, the FTC did state Epic ignored more than 1 million user complaints and repeated employee concerns, and Epic's changes only made the problem worse by purposefully obscuring cancel and refund features to make them difficult to find. 1 million complaints is insane. Sorry, I couldn't help but laugh reading through that. Now, I myself have fallen victim to this. I was just looking at the item shop and mistakenly double clicked the skin and frantically looked for a refund submission tab and I couldn't find it so I had to google how to get a refund in Fortnite. Also if I remember correctly at least at the time you were given like three refund tickets so you could only get refunded three times. I, I don't know. Now the 275 million is more tied to Fortnite's manipulative treatment and privacy violations on behalf of their underage player base. Now, I did mention at the top of this episode that some players might be able to become eligible to find a refund in this settlement. So let's break down the three groups and who would be entitled to compensation. Group number one would be parents whose children made unauthorized credit card purchases in the Epic Game Store between January 2017 and November 2018. Group two includes Fortnite players who were charged in-game currency, being V-Bucks, for unwanted in-game items like cosmetics and the battle pass between January 2017 and September 2022. The final group includes Fortnite players whose accounts were locked between January 2017 and September 2022 after disputing unauthorized charges with their credit card companies. Now, if any of those groups include you, as of right now, you can sign up for an email that updates you with the FTC, all in regards to about how you get this refund. Now, as far as those privacy violations go, they claimed that Epic was illegally collecting children's personal information, matching them with players of a much older age, all while allowing open communications by default. And that Epic was using manipulative tactics to dupe millions of players into making unintentional purchases. And that Epic Games violated the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act by collecting personal information from children under the age of 13 without the parents' consent. But when parents went to go get that information taken down, the FTC states that parents had to jump through hoops and sometimes failed to honor such requests. Now, in regards to that open communication between younger and older players, the FTC stated that Epic Games caused substantial injury to children because of this open communications, and this has opened the door to the children being bullied, harassed, and threatened. Now, to make things even worse, Epic was fully aware of these happenings 
and that Epic's user experience directors emailed the executives back in 2017 seeking basic toxicity prevention for children and to turn off voice chat for children. Now, over the years, Fortnite did add protective measures to their game, but the FTC stated that the changes have not meaningfully alleviated these harms or empowered players to avoid them. So as a result of all of this, Epic Games is now required to turn off voice chat for younger users, and Epic did introduce what they called cabined accounts, which comes with a whole bunch of parental blocks and disables in-game voice chat and in-game purchases. But as per usual, I'm gonna pass this question off to you guys. What do you make of all this Fortnite drama and do you still play this game? Also, if you make money off of this, I'm entitled to a 20% cut for letting you guys know all about this. Listen, I, I, I don't make the rules. But that about does it. I have been Kalo. I gave you the lowdown on all things gaming. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to this channel for weekly video game news content. Also drop a like on the video and I'll see you guys next time.